My name is Tom Skarlinski. I'm a USDA identifier in the Port of Miami. I also specialize in identifying Thysanoptera. Now, someone's brought a package. They set it on our desk, and we have to identify these thrips. So we've managed to get it mounted on a slide, and now we have to decide what suborder is it. Is it uh, Tubalifera or is it a Terebrantia? Well, the best place to look is on the end. What are we going to look for? Is it posterior or terminal abdominal segment? Is it conical or is it tubular? Okay. Now, in this example right here, doesn't look very tubular to me. That tube will completely and circle that tube and the con, the cone, the conical portion will usually have a slit and there's an opening on the venter, on the venter, on the ventral side and you'll notice that there's a gap right up in this area. Okay, so Phleothripidae, the tubulifera if you will, um, we have the cone, and you also notice that there's no slit in it in the center, especially on the venter. So we'll go ahead and focus in on the venter. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. And you see how we just have a solid cone there. All right. So we've pretty much determined that we have a terebrantia. So we're going to move on to couplet seven. Okay, couplet number seven. We want to see, are these antennal segments three and four, do they have emergent simple or forked sensory cones? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our unknown here. All right, there's the head. Let's go ahead and get a count on our antennal segments. When we're counting the antennal segments, it's a good thing to start from the base and then work apically, basally to apically, not apically to basically when you're counting. So we got one, two, and there's our third segment. And let's go ahead and see if we've got a cone there. There's an emergent sense cone. Right there, you see it kind of loops up around this way and comes up this way. And it's, there's a, it's attached basically right here. Um, what I always think of when I see these things is I think of a, a Texas Longhorn. Um, if you've ever seen those mounted on a wall somewhere where then there's a they're, they're, they're centrally, there's a, usually a covering, and then both horns uh, stick out the sides and, and, and jut forward. Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for, something like that. Go ahead, maybe I can, maybe we don't want to get too much light, but can you all, let's try this other side here. We'll go ahead and focus in and out really slowly. Okay, here's an example of a simple sense cone. We've got, and I'll focus this in in a second, we've got segment one, two, three, four. So the question is, is are they emergent, are they simple, or are they, emerge, are they, are they forked? Well, this is an example of a simple sense cone. And let me go ahead and put a little bit more focus on those sense cones. Now it's sometimes, and this has happened to me more, more uh, occasionally. You can get a, the forked sense cones, and sometimes the angle of those forked sense cones might coincide with the angle of the antennal segment, and it'll appear that it's it's a simple sense cone. Because as you go into lower taxa, you'll find that then we're going to divide up 
groups that have simple sense cones and groups that have default sense cones. So uh, it is something that can happen later. And you always have both sides. Sometimes you get a specimen that has one, one of the antenna knocked off, but uh, you, you have to be very careful sometimes. And sometimes it's very difficult to see in smaller specimens. Uh, for example, a, a, a very tiny ones that, that we'll see later are uh, um, some dendrothrypines in the, in the genus Leucothrips. They have very tiny ones that are forked, and sometimes they can appear to be a, a simple sense cone. Yeah. So we've pretty much established that on this specimen, we have the forked sense cones, and, okay... And we have a conical terminal abdominal segment that doesn't fully enclose. So we have Thripidae.